Good morning, party people. Yes, I am in the Baltimore, Maryland area. Still helping a few folks out here. Finishing up some personal business. Yes, that means laundry. Then I gotta go take care of a couple things. Uh, try to ship out some parts to somebody. Get some packages together, shipped out. Then I'm gonna go visit, uh, hopefully, two different people to help get a couple things done. We ordered some parts for Jose yesterday. Met Jose, took a ride in his uh, 2015, I think, uh, XC70. Man, that is like the fastest Volvo I think I might have ever been in. That thing is fast. He's got a Hilton tune on that thing and getting on the highway. I put my foot in it a little bit. I looked down. I was like, man, is that? the speedometer because it's digital and is it right he said yeah that's it well man i better slow way down i'm twice what i'm supposed to be doing so man that thing was just boom squatted and got with it man that thing was fast he said he'd be spanking him with that thing so uh he's got another car that's something like a, I think an 04 uh, XC70 that we're doing some maintenance and repairs to we can do a little bit of uh, repairs to the 2015 so we'll have some fresh videos on that stuff and man just you know taking it uh, one day at a time man it's a little chilly out here it's in the 40s low 40s waking up in the morning but it should be warmed up tomorrow I could get out earlier tomorrow so I hope you enjoyed today's video uh, hanging out with uh, Peter and taking care of the rest of the stuff on his car. I put a skid plate, IPD skid plate on pencil. Immediately raised the temperature of my oil 10 degrees. So, you know, knock those oil cooler lines off. That's good for about 10 degrees warmer. Put that IPD belly skid plate on there. That upped me another 10 degrees. So I'm, I'm 20 degrees above what uh, the car would normally run at but it's still well within good operating range for full synthetic oil so hope you enjoyed today's video thanks for watching welcome to hanging out with robert that's me this video contains things that i tinker with throughout the day for step-by-step -step detailed instructions of those tasks you can click on the link in the comment section below i plan on leaving this video accessible for about 30 days after that, you can view it through my Patreon account. This video also has tips and tricks that I've learned over the years. So, thank you very much for watching. And you see that bird there about 12 feet from me. Kicking off the tinker day. We're going to start off by getting the serpentine belt on, bleeding the brakes, doing uh uh, we'll just take it one at a time. So let's get it up in the air and bleed the brakes. Going to kick it off with the brake power bleeding. As you know, last night it failed the test. Got my turkey baster here. Suck that old fluid out. Then I got my power bleeder there. I'm going to get some fresh fluid in there. Start pumping it in. Brake fluid so old, the float was stuck in the up position. Got it get that gummed out so that it drops if the level drops it give you a light yuck hit that thing with some brakes parts cleaner that thing looks as good as new now look at that sludge that came out of it all that white stuff was gummed up in this float brake reservoir float that thing falls right down now uh, that's horrible What's even more concerning is all that stuff was in the reservoir. So, got to keep that, st that fluid changed. Won't let it get this old. Screen comes out, but it's a tight fit. But man, it's got sludge in there too. It needs to be sprayed and cleaned out. Then I can suck all that stuff out of there. In this video, we're going to show you how to bleed the brake system. And that is replacing all the fluid in the entire brake system from the reservoir back to the calipers. You also want to get all of the trapped air out of the system because air in the system can cause the brakes 
not to be as efficient because air compresses while fluid does not. This is really something you should probably do every two years or 30,000 miles, which means I got to do it sometimes twice in one year. I put in excess of 40,000 miles on my car a year. Now, the brake fluid is designed to keep your brake system functioning well. Of course, it helps the parts of the brake system pressurize the calipers, make those calipers squeeze the pads against the rotors, give you stopping force. When your brake fluid gets old, it quits functioning in the system the way it's designed to do. It lubricates a little bit. It also absorbs water. When you have cold metal parts and they get hot from braking force, they what we call sweat. That sweat is absorbed in the brake fluid and then that brake fluid does two things. It loses its ability to protect the brake system, keep all those parts lubricated, stuff like that. It also lowers the boiling point of the fluid. Why does that matter? Well, if your braking system gets extremely hot and the heat of the braking system, calipers, pads, rotors, exceeds the fluid's ability to prevent boiling, the fluid will boil. Usually does that when it's contaminated with moisture that it has captured over time. When the braking system fluid boils, it starts introducing air into the calipers. When you have air in the system, you can lose your braking ability. Ask me how I know. Happened to me one time. I got a video linked in the comments below. So it's important to replace the old fluid with new fluid. As time goes on, the fluid absorbs moisture. That moisture lowers the boiling point, and sooner or later, your boiling point is brought down so low that you can uh, have brake boil in normal braking situations. Now me, I had mine boil in extreme braking situations, trying to avoid an accident, getting stuck in traffic all of a sudden, going from high speed to low speed, things like that. Coming down a long hill braking could also raise the temperature of your braking parts and introduce you to a situation where your brake fluid can boil. So my advice is that you, one, check your owner's manual, see how often they recommend you replace that fluid. Two, verify in your owner's manual what type of fluid you should be using. Auto parts stores recommend the wrong brake fluid to people all the time. My car uses DOT4. A lot of the Volvos in the 90s uses DOT4. But these auto parts stores always sell people DOT3, which has a lower boiling point. When your brake system gets hot, you don't want a lower boiling point to start off. Example, I believe DOT3 begins to boil at about 340 degrees, whereas DOT4 begins to boil at around 430 degrees. So, you don't want to use DOT3 in a system that is expected to use DOT4. Also, you don't want to use the wrong type of brake fluid. So, check your owner's manual. Use the right type of fluid. Let's get started. Most car manufacturers design their vehicles to use approximately 32 fluid ounces of fluid in the entire system. Which is about 900 and 50 milliliters if you have one bottle this one bottle should flush the whole system so you rarely need more than one bottle also you need to know as soon as you open this bottle this bottle or this fluid in the bottle will begin to absorb moisture moisture from the atmosphere moisture from damp areas whatever so once you open brake fluid, it begins to age. In your car system, it's designed to last about two years. Sitting on the shelf, it may be bad in two years. It may be bad in four. Unless you have a tester, you don't know. Somebody has some brake fluid sitting on their shelf in their garage. I tested it. The fluid was bad sitting on the shelf in two and a half years. So... You don't want to have fluid sitting around. 
they actually make a tester that you can test the brake fluid to see if it's good. What you see here is a brake fluid tester. Basically what it does is measure the water content in the fluid. Brand new fluid should have 0% water content. If you have 1 or 2% water content in your fluid, that's considered okay. When you get an excess of 2% water content in your brake fluid, that's considered bad, needing to be changed. So, I push the button, it's a green light, I dip it in the brake fluid, as you can see, every light lit up. It's in excess of 4% water content. That's bad for the components in your braking system, and it could allow things like your calipers and master cylinder and stuff like that to begin to rust because there's water content in the fluid in your system. So what you want to do is try to keep this water content below 2% by changing the fluid as recommended in your owner's manual. Now a lot of people just eyeball the brake fluid. When it starts getting brownish in color, like you see in that reservoir, sometimes you can see it in the side of the reservoir, you know that brake fluid is old. You don't want to wait until it gets that old. Here is some fresh, here is some fresh brake fluid inside this cap. I turn my tester on, I dip it in there. It has zero water content. You know, so you want less than 2% water content. That more water content you have in your brake fluid, the quicker that brake fluid can boil. Again, if your brake fluid boils while you're braking and the brakes are hot, you introduce air into the system, you lose your ability to brake. So, let's get started. You want to protect your brake fluid system from any dirt contamination getting in there. First thing you want to do is clean off the reservoir top. Make sure that all the dirt and debris from around it, you can spray it down with brake parts cleaner. You don't want any dirt falling in there when you open up the reservoir. You take the lid out of the reservoir. Protect your painted and other surfaces from brake fluid. Brake fluid is corrosive and it eats through things like paint, stuff like that. So you don't want to get this brake fluid on anything if you don't have to. Take the lid out, put a rag under it, sit it in the rag. Now I had already cleaned this one off with brake parts cleaner because it was gummed up. That's a float sensor in there. You don't want that gummed up. You want that to be able to go up and down very easy. That way, if your fluid starts getting low, you get a warning light inside the car. Once you have the brake reservoir cap off, you can begin to squeegee out some of the fluid. Now, most vehicles brake fluid reservoir has a screen in there to protect dirt and stuff from getting into the system. That's kind of got a tight fit. You can pull that up and out of there, get you some pliers or something, remove that so that it is not in the way of you siphoning out all the fluid that you want to get out. Make sure that's cleaned off and not damaged. That's protecting dirt from getting in your braking system. Next, I take a turkey baster, pay a buck or two for at a grocery store. I get a container and I begin to squeegee out the fluid from inside the reservoir. I suck it up into the turkey baster. I squirt it into the container. So I want to get all of the fluid possible out of that reservoir because when I introduce fresh clean fluid in there, I really don't want it mixing with the old fluid that's in there. So once I get all of that sucked out of there, I'm going to go under the car, open up one of the brake caliper bleeding screws, start to allow fluid to come out of that brake caliper, then I'm going to fill this reservoir up with fresh fluid. Once I get that reservoir filled up with fresh fluid, I know it's flowing down towards that open caliper. I'm also going to fill this up with the rest of the bottle from the fresh bottle that I purchased. Pressurize this so that it's pressurizing the brake system, pushing the fluid out. Now, on most vehicles, the bleeding order of the calipers is the furthest caliper from this brake reservoir first, then the next closest 
then the next closest, then the closest. So on my vehicle, I'm going to go passenger rear, then I'm going to go driver's rear, then I'm going to go passenger side, then I'm going to go driver's front. Because those brake calipers are the furthest to the closest away from my reservoir. Let me go ahead and suck all the fluid out of this and then attach my draining system to the caliper furthest away from this brake fluid reservoir. I got all the fluid out of there that I possibly could. I'm going to cover that up with a rag so nothing drips in there. Now I'm going to go connect my rear brake caliper to the container I'm going to drain the fluid in. You could take the wheel off if you want. I just jacked the car up, put them on jack stands, and I can access this bleed screw from the caliper without taking the wheel off. So I take the dust cap off of it. I'm going to put a socket on there to break that loose. These are often hard to get off, so you may want to spray PB Blaster on it. I've even seen people go so far as to add a little heat to them. But you want to break that screw loose. Then you want to snug it down a little bit, put the bleeding hose on there that you're going to drain the fluid into. Then you want to put the tool on there and open that up so that fluid begins to drain out of the caliper. The drain bottles that I have that will catch the fluid has a little vent hose hole in the cap. It has a tube that goes up to the bleed screw. It has hooks that can hang them from the springs or suspension parts and cables to support them. Whatever you want to do, you want to make sure that the bottles don't fall over. Mine even has a magnet on there. It can be magnetized to a suspension part to hold on. But since I'm close to the ground, I'm going to set the bottle on the ground. My bleed screws were 9 millimeter. I broke, broke those loose. You're normally find your bleeder screws are going to be between 9 and 11 millimeters so I got the screw broke loose I should be getting fluid out of them I could press the brake to accelerate that however I have a power bleeder that power bleeder will open up the check valve and push fluid past that so I have that open sometimes the thread on these calipers will leak a little fluid so I'm gonna put a rag under it so it don't get down on the wheel and leak on the ground that stuff I said is it's harsh so you don't want it leaking all over things so I'm gonna put a rag under there pour some fluid in the reservoir hook up my power bleeder and begin to bleed this caliper with my power bleeder you can see just maybe a little bit of fluid is starting to come out of there it's hard to tell Yep, so let me put this back on here, catch this fluid coming out, and I'm going to go ahead and hook up the power bleeder, come back here and monitor it, because we'll see it filling up with dirty fluid. Once the fluid starts looking clean, I'm going to stop it, capture just a little bit of it, test it with my brake fluid tester to make sure it's clean fluid, and then we'll close this off and move to the next one on the other side of the car. I will say this. I'm probably going to use half of the bottle just getting fluid back to here clean. And then the other half of the bottle will service the other three calipers. So you're pushing fluid into the caliper from the power bleeder and pushing the bad fluid out. And you're just replacing all the bad fluid with good. Back up to the front of the car. I'm going to fill up this reservoir with fresh fluid and then I'm going to hook up the power bleeder to begin to push the fresh fluid through the lines and through the calipers. You could use a funnel if you want. I'm pretty good at pouring stuff since I do it all the time. Now I'm going to pour almost all of the rest of this fluid into my power bleeder. I'm going to save just a little bit for maybe topping off the reservoir. The fluid I just poured in there mixed in with the dirty fluid that was in there. But let's see what the tester says. See, the tester says I'm at 1% where I was uh, totally clear. Now that you got the fluid in here, you want to go ahead and screw the cap onto your 
fluid reservoir making sure you have the right cap adapter screw that thing on there and then pressurize your power bleeder pressurize the power bleeder by pumping this up and down and then locking it in place when you're using a power bleeder you don't want to mix different types of fluids so clean it out if you're switching from one to another that way you don't contaminate the brake system with some fluid that shouldn't be in the car uh, watch your hoses as you can see I got one leaking here put a rag under that uh, try not to put too much pressure on it I normally put it up to one bar or 15 psi that's why this is leaking because I don't have anything open at this time and I still got a little pressure on it so be careful of that now I'm gonna go under the car and check the calipers make sure that they get fresh fluid out of them then I'm gonna move to the next one then I'm gonna move to the next one I'm done with the back and moving up to the front so I'm gonna come and relieve pressure off of the system so that it's not leaving it pressurized while I reposition my drains when the fluid starts looking clear I close the bleeder screw off then I remove the hose I capture a little bit of it in a cap and then I test it to see if it's clear if it's clear 0% on my tester I cap it off if it's not clear I bleed a little bit more out see that's starting to clear up right now compared to down here in the bottom and just move from one to the next tested the fluid out of this one it's still 3% so I'm gonna go ahead and take a little more fluid out of this one if I pull contaminated fluid out of the caliper I pour it in the drip pan if I pull clean fluid out of the caliper I pour it back in the bottle you want to keep an eye on your reservoir and your power bleeder that you're still pushing fluid through there it had gone empty you keep between I normally do between 10 and 15 psi on it keep a positive flow and if you hear this bottle going empty you want to shut it down you don't want to empty out your reservoir so I'm on my last caliper everything is going well all of them opened up and closed for me so this fluid is starting to look clear already I'm gonna go ahead and close this off and test the fluid and I may be done just need to top off the reservoir all four calipers are bled now I want to make sure the reservoir is topped off so first thing I'm gonna do is relieve pressure off of this so I'm gonna undo the cap to get the pressure off the bottle caps not on that tight as you can see caps loose now I'm gonna unscrew the cap from the reservoir here put a rag under there to catch anything that may be overflowed on there if it's too much fluid in there I'm gonna catch what it will spill out I think the cap has a check valve here yeah see it's got a little valve there to stop you from spilling stuff on it and now I need to top off the reservoir put it at the right level and I'll be all done put the cap on it put the screen in it and put the cap on it and I'll be all done yesterday tried to install several serpentine belts that 1740 that they selling people the 17 was it 1743 yes and the other one that didn't even go to this car so we called up AutoZone told them we wanted the 1752 belt they had this 1755 was the closest to the 1752 that uh, IPD sells belt went right on very easy I'm getting ready to release the tensioner pin so that we can confirm that it pulls good tension on the belt and we'll be done with this so that's the belt we're going with 1755 release the tension pin that goes right there the tensioner moved up to here and the belt is nice and tight if you 
didn't have the belt on there, the tensioner would come probably twice as far as it is now. So it has decent tension on it. These are the belts that we tried. We got this 1743 from FCP. I'm not even sure it's 1743. We got this 1740 from AutoZone didn't fit. This 1740 from AutoZone was too short. This 1840 is for the RN engines. It's a double-sided belt. I don't know why they got this listed as fitting on the 98 car. So we ended up with this 17. 55 would have preferred a 1752 but hey we're good to go i'm gonna pull this other belt out and measure it and see how long it actually is 1743 that i cut off a panther because i couldn't get the dang thing off it was on so tight so we're going to measure it and see how long this thing actually is he's holding that end down i'm stretching this belt out here as tight as i can 68 and a half inches let me run that through Google and see how long hold on that actually is yeah just barely over 68 and a half 68 and and 5 eighths let's say measured the belt on the tape measure 68.65 I ran that through the inches to millimeter and this belt is truly 17.43 but 17.43 is really too short of a belt to be on this serpentine path there you have it this is something I never noticed before this tensioner has this little stop right here that's the front of the stop that's the back of the stop so as I release tension it'll stop at the front edge of that if I took the belt off and let this tensioner go this little stop will ride all the way up to here and stop right there so I'm gonna take the tension off the belt and we can see how much space is left in this tensioner swing so that's the stop it's got that much more travel almost an inch of travel before it would reach its limit so if you took this point it's halfway between that stop and that stop so I think that's a good tension on that belt glad we picked that size but like I said IPD's belt is a 1752 car sat overnight coolant level drop we're gonna put it up to the full line which is that seam on the bar me and Peter's having a little conversation about how many people he's gonna kill when these tires blow oh my god this one's the 15th week of 2002 a radial tire is that Michelin M MX V4 I'll call Michelin they'll come get that one from you real quick <laughs> let's see what this one is that's the same tire heck I didn't know that's a, a plus 27th week of 2005 Ooh, look at that one coming apart. Good Lord. 27th week of 2005. And this is the oldest one out of the bunch. The 21st. Oh, the newest one. 21st week of 2008. So this one's been replaced for some reason somewhere along the road. He's got slotted rotors on this thing. But man, I see tires better than that at the junkyard. We're going to change the air filter. Half of those clips are undone. A couple more. Pop that right out. Pop the new one in. In Peter's defense, he really didn't drive this car that much. I think he's put like 3,000 miles on it in five years. So this car is doing more sitting than anything. But man, I, I wouldn't put this thing on the highway with those tires. An air filter. One each. I won't show you the other one. I don't want to mess up your appetite. But we vacuumed out that compartment under there. Where this goes, lock the new one in place, tabs on the back, tabs on the front, and we're going to be good to go. Axle, blown open. Uh, did they replace the whole axle or just the boot? The whole thing. Okay. There's that torn up boot. We're going to go ahead and get that clip out of there, wash that thing out, put it all back together with a brand new boot. There it is, folks. 
came with a nut and everything. Did they say that was uh, OEM? Not sure. Where'd you get it from? FCP. FCP, good deal. This is a Volvo axle. You want to save these when you can. Dang it, my camera don't want to pick up the word Volvo. So I'm going to pop this clip loose with this little wire cutter. Slide this. Lay a rag over the top of the axle and spray in there where the clip is with some brake parts cleaner. Now you have a nice clean view of the clip ring that you need to spray it to pull that off, that bearing assembly off. So let me go ahead, get my clip ring spreader, spread that out, tap that off of the axle. I got that clip spread open. It's starting to slide off the axle. I see it's got a little green spot there. I'm going to put a little spot on the axle that's maybe help me get it lined back up so I can put it on the way it came off. Here we go. All the parts are clean, dried up, ready to put this back together with the new grease kit and everything. Got the axle even cleaned off. Got a mark on there where it was lined up with the blue mark in there. So let me go ahead and get this together. Keep this stuff cracking. All done with the CV axle reboot. Other than clamping it. Put the clamp there. Put the clamp there. Just snug them down. Put the axle back in. There's a little bit of a pain in the butt getting the boot to pop up on the end. But we got it going. So I'm going to keep moving. This inner clamp here is fine. I was able to adjust it in one, but this outer clamp is not even close. Either I gotta find a big zip tie or use the old clamp that I pulled off of this boot because this clamp is no way gonna snap on there. Could not find my giant zip tie that I used to clean out PCV systems. And this clip, is smaller than the clip that came off of it and it won't fit see how big the old one is so i opened up the old one a little bit i'm gonna clip that on there secure it get this axle installed got the axle in place the turbo down here looks nice and dry the coolant hose there doesn't look like it's in bad shape He's pretty good shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that into the axle in, jack up the control arm, put those screws in there, load it, secure it. Gotta load this control arm before you tighten those two bolts down. You know it's loaded when you jack it up and your jack stand is loose enough to move, so. Now I can torque those bolts down back there, put the tire on, lower this thing, torque this bolt on here, torque my lug nuts on, should be good to go. Oh, I got an anti-sway bar link to install as well. Have the anti-sway bar link in place. It is not reaching this top hole, so I just unload the jack here until it's perfect setup. Then I put the anti sway bar link on. That's a 16, so I'm gonna have to put a star in there to hold it and get my 16 crooked in wrench to tighten that nut down. Turn it into the gadget guy. This is my torque wrench I got from my buddy John in Chicago. So I'm gonna torque it to 87 foot pounds with this. It's gonna beep. Then I'm going to use my gadget I got from Desi to uh, do the angle on it. Let's check it out. Alright, got that torqued. Now let me go get my angle torque gauge. Finish this thing off. My new gadget. Turned it on. Calibration. I guess it's just going to set it here. It's set. Set for 60 degrees. I'm going to put this on 
the tool. And now, I'm gonna put my cheater on there and move this thing. And see what it does when it gets to 60 degrees. Okay, I got my bar on here. Let's see what happens. Forty-four. I had to go some more, but it hit the ground. I had to move it, so I added sixteen and forty-four, redid it, and it beeped and turned green when I got to my right angle toward it. Held it down for five seconds, and it powered off. All right, I'm past my lunch time, so I'm gonna take a break here, go get some lunch. I hear there's a plate, not even a quarter mile, so I'm actually walk. Um, Peter left me alone. He had to go to a wedding, him and his wife. So they left me the keys to the kingdom. Peter and his wife, real nice people. So I don't have to worry about them pulling a Karen on me, calling the cops, saying somebody's over at their crib. I can just relax. Go get me something to eat, come back, finish up the work. Headed to get a bite to eat. Like I said, Peter and his wife went to a wedding. You know, Peter said, man, I need to get some work done on my car. I ain't letting the uh, wedding stop me from getting work done. I just leave the car and the parts and stuff, you know. Some people say, man, I got to work. Yeah. I, I've worked on cars before without the owner being there. But I understand you want to hang out, but you can't always hang out. Is it more important to hang out or get stuff done on your car? Heck, man, I'll do it. I, I love hanging out. Don't get me wrong. But uh, if you got stuff you need to get done on your car, let's get that stuff done, man. So, anyway, we're going to go get a bite to eat. Check on Diane. Get me a little walk on in and get back here. I think I only got like two or three little things to do. One of them is a fuel filter. So, should have maybe about an hour worth of stuff left to do on his car. Maybe do a couple things on mine. So, keep it moving. The train's rolling. Waiting for the contact glue to set so I can put those clips on there. Put this door back together. Need the light there. And then this car will be, you know, ready to go for a little while. Other than these tires, man. Look at that. You can see the air in there. That's amazing. One Panther. The IPD skip plate. It's getting dark. I'm going to call it a night. I was going to put this door and fender on, but I think I'm going to do that in the morning somewhere and go ditch that stuff. And I'm done for tonight. If you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.